Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is another what's for dinner video. Just some Monday to Friday week meal inspiration for you and your family. Uh, I hope you get some inspiration out of it. Um, if you do, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. This video was actually highly requested and I really enjoyed making it. So I hope you guys like it. If you're new around here, my name is Lenny and I am from the Netherlands. I share all kinds of family and uh, mum related content. If you like what you see, consider subscribing. I'd love to get to know you. So leave me a comment down below and uh, yeah that's it without further ado let's jump into the video so today we are having a vegetarian quiche with butternut squash and a butternut squash soup uh, this is an ideal recipe for a lunch or a festive brunch I make quiche often and most of the time um, most of the times I make the short crust pastry myself uh, because it's really easy and delicious um, if you want to make your own dough, I will link my French quiche video in the description down below. But today I want to show you how easy it is to make quiche with time-saving uh, store-bought pie dough. Um, the key to a good crust with a crumbly bottom uh, is to blind bake or pre-bake the pastry and that is my first step. Uh, I crinkle a sheet of baking paper so it will fit better and then I'm adding some weight. Oh yeah, I poked some holes with a fork so the heat can come through. Uh, sometimes I forget this step and then there can be a bubble on the bottom but for the taste that doesn't matter. Uh, so I have a mixture of ceramic pie weights and dried beans that I use for blind baking over and over again. Uh, put it in the oven on 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. Uh, then I'm going to cut a butternut squash into smaller pieces and lay half of the amount uh, on an oven tray. And I do the same with three or four red onions. Then I add olive oil, salt, pepper and a good amount of fresh thyme. Uh, mix it all together and set aside for the moment. After 15 minutes, I'm taking out the pastry, I remove the pie weights and I put it back into the oven for about 5 to 10 minutes or until the bottom looks dry. Uh, I also put in the tray with the vegetables for 10 to 15 minutes or until the butternut squash is nearly done. Uh, you don't want to have it completely cooked, it needs to have a bit of a bite. Uh, for my quiche filling or savory custard, I use 250 milliliters of milk and 250 milliliters of cream um, and four large eggs or five smaller ones. Give it a good whisk and add salt and pepper. Now that the pastry is nice and dry and the vegetables are almost done, uh, it is time to fill the quiche. I am using goat cheese, uh, but if goat cheese is not for you, you can use feta cheese or ricotta as well. Uh, and for a little crunch, I like to add some nuts. I'm using walnuts, but feel free to use cashews or pine nuts. Then add the creamy quiche filling and put it in the oven for 35 to 45 minutes on 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then for my soup, I use the other half of the butternut squash pieces, an onion, two cloves of garlic and a carrot. Uh, I cut the onion and carrot into cubes and heat up some olive oil in a pan. I sweat the onion, you just want to soften them without changing color. Uh, add garlic, the carrot and the squash, um, one liter of water and a vegetable stock cube. Bring to the boil and let it cook for approximately 20 minutes. Then blend it in a blender and your soup is done. Uh, a simple trick to clean your blender, by the way, is to rinse it off, fill it again with warm water and a drop of dish soap. Uh, turn the blender back on, rinse once again with some water and your blender is perfectly clean. So you don't have to remove and clean all the separate parts every time you use the blender. So on Tuesday, I make pasta bake with tuna. You need pasta, basil, two tins of chopped tomatoes, two onions, three cloves of garlic, some tuna and cheese. Um, here we go. I chop the onion and fry it for a few minutes in a pan with some olive oil. Um, I add the garlic and the tinned tomatoes and bring it to a boil. Uh, I chop some basil leaves. I add them to the sauce and let it simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. 
If you want to make this pasta for a bigger family, just add some extra tuna, an extra tin of chopped tomatoes and some extra pasta. Uh, the measurements are not so precise and then it can easily feed six people. Um, for me, it's just me and the kids tonight and maybe my husband later. And if we have some leftovers, we'll have a good lunch tomorrow. Um, so I'm cooking the pasta al dente in some salted water. Um, because the dish is going into the oven, uh, make sure the pasta is not overcooked. Stir the tuna through the sauce and season with salt and pepper. Then add the pasta, mix well, and then put everything in an oven dish. Uh, take some grated cheese and sprinkle it over the pasta. And to make it really, to make it look really nice, I arrange some extra basil leaves on top. Um, then it goes in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes on 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And I serve this with a nice salad. Today I am making a great winter dish, Hungarian goulash. This is seriously one of my favorite beef stews and I often make a big portion and freeze it in my freezer. Uh, this will make the taste even more intense. So I cut up a beef chuck into smaller pieces, uh, season them with pepper and then cover them with a layer of flour. Uh, I use one kilo of beef and then one full tablespoon of flour. Uh, then I will sear it in a pan. Uh, I'll brown the beef uh, with some olive oil. This will take a while. And then add two or three chopped onions uh, and stir it in. Um, add two or three roughly chopped bell peppers uh, and then three tablespoons of paprika powder and mix it well together. Then I'm adding 70 grams of tomato puree and I will fry that for a minute with the meat and the vegetables. And after a minute, I add two teaspoons of thyme, uh, two teaspoons of caraway seeds and a bay leaf. Um, just mix it all together and then add 300 milliliters of beef stock. I love to slow cook this dish in my oven on 120 degrees Celsius for a couple of hours, uh, but you can also let it simmer on a low heat on the stove for two and a half to three hours until the meat is tender. Uh, when you want to reduce some of the sauce in the end, you um, uh, you, you know, you want to make it thicker, uh, put the pan for 10 minutes on a higher heat and it, if it's too dry, you can just add some extra stock. Uh, you can serve this dish with fries, uh, mashed potatoes, boiled potatoes, anything you like, but I love to, to eat it with cooked rice and some green beans. And then it's Thursday and I'm making a traditional Dutch dish called Hutspot. Uh, this meal has a long history and it's still very popular in winter. Um, so the recipe is very easy. It takes one kilo of potatoes in a pan with some water, salt, uh, 700 grams of sliced carrots and two chopped onions. Um, bring it to the boil and in the meantime, I'm going to fry some sausages. Uh, so this simple dish has quite an impressive history that I must tell you guys. Uh, it goes back to the 16th century when the city of Leiden was under siege by the Spanish uh, during the 80, 80 years war. Um, the Dutch defended the city for more than a year, uh, but the people were starving. And then finally the Dutch had a brilliant idea and finally succeeded in, in their resistance by flooding the land and driving the Spanish away. Uh, so the Spanish uh, soldiers, so the legend says, uh, they left some cooked bits of this unfamiliar stew with carrots and parsnips and meat, um, which the starving people of, of Leiden ate up immediately. Uh, they had no idea how to call it, so they named it Hutspot, after the Dutch word uh, Hutsen, which means mix and mash it all together or something like that. And it has remained a symbol of the victory uh, until this day. Uh, that's quite a story, right? <laughs> Uh, so once the sausages are nice and brown, I'm taking out uh, some of the fat with paper towel and to make some gravy, I add a bit of water to uh, loosen the brown bits on the bottom of the pan and bring it to the boil. Uh, dissolve a teaspoon of cornstarch in a minimum amount of water so it becomes a thin paste and then add into the boiling sauce while whisking until the gravy is thick enough. Um, I like to keep the sausages warm in the gravy. Um, then let the potatoes and carrots boil for 30 minutes and then pour away the excess water. Uh, just mash this all together, adding some salt, pepper, a bit of milk and some nutmeg. And it's just Dutch comfort food.
So today it's Friday and I'm having dinner with my husband tonight. Uh, the kids had some leftover hotspot from yesterday and uh, we are having fresh pasta with chicken and truffle sauce. Uh, so I fry 250 grams of mushrooms in a pan and then I add some cream to start the sauce. Uh, I let it simmer so the cream will thicken and then I'll add some salt and pepper and I had some uh, leftover roast chicken that I kept in the freezer and then uh, some black uh, truffle paste. Um, fresh pasta and then some rocket and parmesan cheese as a finishing touch and my god i love this dish um, yeah i hope you got some inspiration thanks for watching <laughs>